What's good y'all, it's your boy Ross, back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 iconic WWE finishers that wrestlers killed. Oh, this should be a good one. This should be a very good one. Instantly, the first move I can think of, and it's the thumbnail of this particular video by WrestleMania, is the super kick. The super kick has just been overused. It is not that effective anymore. Nine times out of 10, you're not gonna see a pin. You're not gonna see someone lose to a super kick. You'll see a pinning combination, but you're not gonna see someone lose to it. It has been overdone and overused. It's literally like a setup move. Like people just be eating super kicks, the CTE kicks and kicking out at one. Like it's been overused overdone that's just my personal opinion it is it, it doesn't seem that important doesn't seem that impactful like it used to because everyone uses it you feel me so we're gonna check out some other moves that you know finishers that are just been overused to the point where they're not even technically called finishers anymore because people don't you know get finished by them they <laughs> usually people kick out to them appreciate all love and support this should be a good one let's do this thing man in modern day pro wrestling it is extremely difficult to come up with a new exciting and innovating finishing move virtually every move imaginable has been used as a finishing move at some love the crossroads though makes it hard for new wrestlers to stand out it's also a major issue that moves that may have been iconic and protected two decades ago. DDT definitely has to be on that list too. I forgot. DDT is right up there too. A lot of people use the DDT. It used to be a finishing move. Now it, it, it does. It's just like a setup move. Nobody's getting knocked out by DDT. So I got to put that on the list too. And how seen as transitional moves. This means that if a new wrestler was to introduce that specific move as their finisher, the fan base would have a difficult time in accepting that move as a legitimate, credible finishing move. Yeah. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 iconic finishers that wouldn't get over today. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new website, WrestleMania.com. Number 10, The Sleeper Hold. Uh, the sleep hold is one of the most well-known submission moves in pro wrestling. The hold was used enough. by legendary Rowdy Roddy Piper as a finisher, and there have been a number of variations of the move used as a finisher over the years. Well, Piper is probably the wrestler most associated with the move. Maybe him and Ted DiBiase. Uh -huh. In modern day WWE, the move is often used as a basic submission hold in a match and is even used as a standard rest hold so yeah. the wrestlers can catch their breath and even communicate when it comes to upcoming spots. Yeah. If a wrestler was to reintroduce the move as a finisher today, it'll be extremely hard for fans to invest in the move as rep. That was a good match to Dragunov versus uh, Gunther. Fantastic match. The petition of the move has been butchered over the past two decades. Notably, Dolph Ziggler attempted to introduce the move as a secondary finisher around a decade ago, but it sadly struggled to get over, and it wasn't before long that Ziggler retired the move as a finisher. Yeah. Number nine, belly to belly. It's yeah. unlikely that a belly to belly suplex will ever become obsolete in wrestling. The move looks good and is considered relatively safe. However, a wrestler using the move as a primary finisher ever again would be a daring task. Yeah. The move was last used as a finisher when Bailey decided uh -huh. to use the move and rebrand it the Bailey to Belly. Her version was perfect for her character, but she quickly realized that when she changed gimmicks, the move didn't really work well as a standout finishing move when portraying any other character outside of the. It, it worked at the time for her for her gimmick but obviously she had to change it up hugger as if she the became move was a to be heel. introduced as a new finisher then a modification of the move would be needed or ultimately the move would fail to get over with a modern day audience yeah number eight ko punch when the big show introduced a ko punch as a finishing move it was a bold yet smart choice for the former champion it goes without saying that a seven foot because it kind of worked it worked with the big show because the dude's like seven foot tall like he has massive hands like it would make sense if he punched you square in the face, then you would you would probably be knocked out. Foot tall, almost 500 pound man punching an opponent is a surefire way to win a match and obtain credibility. But the problem is that the move simply wouldn't work for anyone else. Yeah. There are obvious question marks surrounding <laughs> how the move is even legal in WWE. Bro, as Triple H sold that. I, that's, that shit was funny, bro. He sold the hell out of that punch. 
it depends on WWE's stance on closed fists when it comes to punches. Due to punches being a very standard part of any modern WWE match, if the move was used as a finisher by a new wrestler, fans would have no idea it was a finishing move. Yeah. It took some time for Beak. fans to accept the move as Big Show's new finisher, and he had to be presented and protected with Beak. care and diligence. <laughs> there is no way a wrestler in modern day WWE would be able to get the move over, and we've seen examples such as Lacey Evans with the women's right, yeah. and has expected this move look completely flat upon execution, and nobody took it seriously. No. Number seven the worm the attitude era was a time in which more comedic finishers were able to get over with the audience the worm was a finisher of two cool members Scotty yeah. too hotty and the finisher whilst entertaining and always delivered a huge crowd reaction yeah it did. it's a rather lackluster move the move is basically a bulldog followed by a funny dance only to be followed up by a fist drop yeah the move was perfect for the respective time and we saw when Scotty used the move in the ruthless aggression it worked it worked in that time period it worked when you really think about it what the fuck is this but I mean, same thing with the people's elbow. It, that's the entertainment side of it. But back then, it definitely did work. Era that fans weren't as keen on the infamous move. If that move was used as a finisher for a wrestler today, then it would have to be solely presented as a comedic move and nothing else. Trying to book and present the move as credible would be a difficult task for WWE. Yeah. We've seen wrestlers such as Otis use a similar move on the WWE main roster, but Otis was extremely smart in having a backup finishing move which allowed him to win matches in a serious and legitimate yeah, it was manner. More so it as wasn't a joke. time for a comedic moment. Yeah. Number six, the AA. John Cena first debuted the AA back in 2003. The Had move was initially introduced to rival Brock Lesnar's F5, yet the move seemed to work perfectly for the Doctor of Thugonomics, so he kept the move for the next two decades. The move is the best possible move for Cena, as it's a safe variation of the popular Death Valley driver maneuver. Yeah. If Cena was to retire the move and a wrestler from either the WWE main roster or NXT started using the move, it'd be unlikely that the move would ever receive a substantial reaction. The move mm -hmm. is firmly associated with Cena, and if yeah. anyone else began to use the move, it would look kind of awkward, and it would forever be compared to Cena, which is something a wrestler would always struggle to overcome. I didn't even realize how many people would like did like a variation of it. It's basically like a fireman's carry. Um, number five, the big splash. Uh. Using a big splash as a finisher was previously a smart way for super heavyweight wrestlers to deliver an impactful finishing yeah, move. I don't think it would work like that Wrestlers such as Mark today. Henry and Viscera both used well, the move as a finisher. And it was a great fit for them as they managed to make the move look Jesus devastating. Christ. The move was also used by the Ultimate Warrior and his version of the move worked because he was able to get significant height on his leap, mm -hmm. which made the move look awesome upon execution. The big splash, similarly to other moves, has become a staple of matches and the move is seen as a transitional move from yeah. one move to the next. If the move was to use by a wrestler today as a primary God finisher, damn, then a noticeable modification would be needed to be implemented. Jeez. This modification may come in the form of delivering the splash from the top, top rope, or yeah. it could be something brand new and unique. Without this modification, the move would struggle to receive a reaction as the fans would be left underwhelmed Jeez. and very dissatisfied. Number four, Best the figure four leg lock. In terms of famous finishing moves, the figure four leg lock is no doubt one of the most celebrated and widely known submission based finishes. The move mm -hmm. is mostly associated with the nature boy Ric Flair and yep. Flair has won countless titles with the trademark move. WWE have had a difficult time in giving the move to anyone else as fans just seem to reject the notion of someone outside of yeah. Flair delivering the move. When Flair passed- That's when you hear the woos throughout the arena. To move on to the Miz, fans loathed the idea, and it didn't help that the Miz's execution of the move was incredibly clumsy. Yeah. WWE would even attempt to give Flair's own daughter Charlotte Flair the move, and Charlotte made the sensible choice of offering a modification and very Which was good, and I'm glad she did that. She called hers the figure eight. I love it. Bridging it, that I like that. That makes it her own when she does it of the move as her finisher is appropriately named the figure eight and he sees charlotte push up into a bridge for extra leverage this has managed to work and the move is seen as one of charlotte's more superior moves and this is predominantly down to charlotte's unique and memorable approach yeah number three the leg drop a hulk hogan is a man who made the leg drop one of the most protected finishing moves of all time oh, oh, hogan's leg drop protected. whilst basic as a finisher was given credibility thanks to years upon wwe protecting the move Decades on from Hogan's era and the move is used as a standard basic move in most matches and the yeah. idea of a wrestler using the move as a finisher is very hard to comprehend. Nah. Unfortunately for fans of the dreaded leg drop, the move is just too basic to be a modern day finishing move and whilst the move may work if a super heavyweight was delivering it as a finisher, yeah. it would still be a tough task to ask fans Jesus. to accept and react positively to the move being delivered. 
Number you can't, two. Uh, you can't just be like, yeah, I'm going to finish this guy with a leg drop. It's, it's not going to work. It, it won't. It's not going to work. Not in today's time, no. After people didn't, did triple corkscrew flips off the top rope through a flaming th- table onto you. Like, it's, there's so many things that people have done. It's like a leg drop is not going to put somebody away if they ain't taking all that type of punish- punishment. To the people's elbow. Figured this would be it's on the list to too. imagine anyone other than The Rock delivering the people's elbow. Yeah. The people's elbow was truly a move that only The Rock would have been able to get over ooh, as ooh, the great ooh. one delivered what was in essence an elbow drop with so much charisma and aura yeah. that it was somehow presented as one of the most legitimate moves in the company. Yeah. A move such as the people's elbow would never work in today's WWE as fans dissect the logic of the move within seconds. Yeah. Even if a wrestler tried to replicate the style of move, it wouldn't be too long before the live audience began to boo the move. Yeah. When The Rock has made sporadic appearances over the past decade he has still used the move and for the most part fans have been okay with it but the sheer idea of a wrestler taking a similar approach to their finishing move is something that fans simply aren't clamoring for and number one sweet chin music there we go i knew there had to be the number one the the super kick has been overdone and overused one of the most overused moves in modern wrestling is the super kick a super kick can be found in virtually every pro wrestling match, and a wrestler yeah. using a single super kick as a finishing move would be difficult to pull off. Shawn Michaels is mostly known for introducing his version of the super kick of to course. WWE, as his version was known as Sweet Chin Music. Sweet Chin if Chin HBK music. debuted today, he would struggle to get the move over because Facts. everyone on the roster uses his finisher. The only way a wrestler in a top company such as WWE might be able to get over the move as a finisher is if a blanket ban is issued on super kicks. If yeah. super kicks are then exclusively kept for finishing moves only. Oh yeah, the Usos, they definitely be doing that too <laughs> with the stereo kicks. <laughs> then a wrestler may have a small chance of restoring the infamous move back yep. to its former glory. But there you have it, folks. Ten iconic fi- Yeah, man. This was a good one. This was definitely a good one. A lot of these moves, if they were trying, if someone was trying to use them today, it wouldn't work as a finisher because they've been overused so many times. And it just, that move is kind of synonymous with a particular wrestler. And even if they do use it, they don't call it the same thing or it's some type of variation of it. But it wouldn't work if you tried to make it as your finisher. That's that's just the nature of the beast. That's why it is kind of difficult to come up with good finishing moves that look unique, that look different. You know, sometimes a lot of times they're going to have some type of variation of other another move. But if you can make it look as unique as possible, you, you pulled off something great. So comment down below. Let me know what's your favorite finisher of all time by any wrestler from any era of wrestling. Even if it happens to be Hulk Hogan's leg drop. If that's your favorite finisher, let me know down below. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel. Road to 150k and I'm still here to speed the YouTube wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See you on the next one. Peace.